Welcome to Todd Family Farm. So it is the second anniversary. Is that right, Abby? Yes. Second anniversary of uh, the channel. So uh, Abby's been promising a Q and A, and I'm going to help with the Q and A a little bit today. I promise her I won't get long-winded, and then we'll keep it interested. So interesting. Um, so some uh, question and answers. We've been gathering some questions and answers, and um, we're just going to give you some, talk to you a little bit. Um, I know one of the questions is, why is our Christmas tree so close to the stove? Because um, we don't run that stove until it gets cold. So we're not planning on having... Uh, cold weather to after Christmas. That's our plan. So we are, uh, but typically that's more of a January thing. That is a big stove, and uh, I'll show you our stove. It's a kitchen queen, and I don't even know if they make it anymore. Um, but it's a big stove. It puts out a lot of heat. We have the water reservoir on the back, uh, right here. So that holds, I don't know, that holds like 30 gallons of water. And when this thing is going and we have it warm, it'll boil water back there, literally. So we run this thing more in January and after Christmas. Um, our countdown, so, so the tree is not really a fire hazard that close because this this isn't, we haven't even begun to crank this up. We've got a smaller one in the back we can run, um, but our house is very well insulated and we hold heat very well, even though we're up on top of a hill. So it's hard to crank this thing up. We believe in um, being prepared, so we don't necessarily have to burn this if we don't want to, but in Iowa, it gets cold, and you could freeze to death, and we will probably freeze to death before we flood to death. So I don't have as much pity as I should on some people that when they flood, because I think you're in a floodplain, you ought to be aware that you could flood. Well, I guarantee you, if we flood here, up on this hill, a thousand foot up, the world's in trouble. So God promised not to flood the world. I doubt we're going to flood here. Um, but we get wind and we can get cold and we better be able to stay warm in the middle of winter because we can't count on anybody else. That's why we have stoves. If we freeze to death in Iowa, nobody can be that upset because we know it's going to get cold. You better be sufficiently prepared to deal with cold. So that's what the stove is for. Um, this is an Oriental Trading Special. So it's just uh, came from Oriental Trading and um, somebody asked about that. That's our countdown. So you can try Oriental Trading. I don't know. Our clock over there. Um, people admire our clock and you know you do these videos and you don't realize what's going to stand out and what people are going to like. So our clock. I have an admiration for clocks. I will show you the clock here, uh, and people may recognize that, yes, that is a, that's a uh, Howard Miller, and it's got all the bells and whistles, or chimes, and um, it is a $6,000 clock. I did not pay $6,000. We found that on Craigslist, somebody was liquidating. And it was about, we had to go about two, two, almost two and a half hours away to get it, but it was only $600. So, uh, steel of the century there. Um, always watched for clocks, enjoyed clocks. But, um, yeah, that's where we, that's how we did our clock. Lemuel, you know how many bushels the Big Ben holds? 60,000. Say it loud where they can hear you. 60,000. Yep, big bin holds 60,000. And um, then we have three smaller bins, a uh, couple 20s and a uh, 12 or so. So um, what size is the big auger? Uh, is that a 13, 13 inch? Yeah, or is that a 15 inch? High is big. Uh, I don't know if that's 13 or 15. I I'll have to. 13. Yeah, 13. Um, Abby, uh, Rhonda wants to know where we sell our corn. Do you want to explain that? Uh, I'll do my best. We sell it. I don't know. You want me to answer it? I don't know I what I should Okay, I hate to do all the answering, and I don't want to get long-winded. i tell you what we'll do here. Um, 
we'll make this a two-part series in case we get long-winded. So this will be part one, and we've got, on um, part two, I think we will tell you how we got to Iowa, because we started in North Carolina. So I'll tell you how we got to Iowa, and I'll tell you our kind of origin story of uh, how we got established here in Iowa. And it's a pretty interesting story, but that deserves its own video, so we'll get back to that. So where do we um, sell corn? We sell corn to a large chicken farm, chicken ranch, and that chicken farm picks up eggs, uh, and then they crack the eggs, they separate the yolks and the whites, and they go into baking materials. And they, and, and they actually get shipped out on tanker trucks. And if you want, so say you're Sara Lee over on the East Coast or Sara Lee wherever, and you use a semi-load of egg yolks at a time, and you might use several semi-yolks of egg whites at a time, and they, they don't just use one egg. They use so much yolk and so much white, and that's where... So if you eat Sara Lee, you might be eating our corn, ultimately, because our corn goes to feed chickens that lay eggs that get processed into Sara Lee goods or wherever. Whoever uses mayonnaise, you know, there's yolks and mayonnaise and whites and mayonnaise, and corn is the base structure of all that stuff. And without corn, you won't have mayonnaise. Not because it's corn oil in there, because there's eggs in there that uh, are made from our corn. So a lot of corn goes to ethanol. Ethanol gets put in gasoline. If we, ha if we have corn that's too wet to go to the chicken ranch, we send it to an ethanol facility. But most of our corn over the last 10 years has gone to the chick what we call the chicken ranch. Um, and beans, for those that don't know, that's the protein. Beans are high in protein, and they will go to a facility, get the oil pressed out, it, beans have to be cooked in order for uh, them to be used uh, in, in animal feed. So that's that. Are we homeschooled? Abby, you can do that one. Yes, we've been homeschooled all our life. And yeah, I guess <laughs> I really like it. Uh, I couldn't be as involved in the farm as I am if I went to public school. So I really like it. It allows me to be a lot more flexible with my schedule and everything, and I get to choose what I want to do a little bit more, what I want to pursue. So, yeah, we've been homeschooled all our life. And if you have more questions about it, just ask. Uh, we can elaborate. Here's the clock going. Uh, how are the pigs doing? Uh, I took a video. Abby can insert that here. Hi. Um... So one of the questions uh, is how the pigs are doing. So we're gonna go in here and see the pigs. The pigs are doing great. So um, I'm gonna step here. There they are. It is, I don't know if you can see that or not, 70, 75 degrees. So uh, anybody that tells you uh, confinement hogs is it, bad, there's pros and cons to it, but the pros definitely outweigh the cons. And this right there, uh, that's why it, it, it's done this way. The pros outweigh the cons. And what's the pro? Um, you can be 75 degrees in here. Happy, bouncy pigs. They're all wondering what I'm doing, but you go, whoo! Happy, warm pigs. Then you can step outside. And today's not a bad day, but uh, down to 14 last night. 14 degrees out here. 75 degrees in there. It's hard to beat putting a bunch of pigs in a, a 75 degree house. Uh, no predators, safe, sound, and, and happy. So, uh, yeah, there's like two months a year out here. They'd be beautiful for them to gallivant around and, and run through the meadows and flowers. But then there's 10 months a year that you're either 90 degrees or negative 20. And pigs don't like negative 20. So pigs are doing good. So that's how the pigs are doing. And 
Roxanne Gray asked, do big sweet potatoes taste different than small ones? And are they any tougher? Do you know that, Abby, or? Uh, no, they don't really taste any different. Uh, they're the same age. So a uh, sweet potato plant will uh, put all of its energy into maybe one or maybe two uh, big sweet potatoes, and then the rest are little small bonus ones, and they're all the same age. So no, they don't really taste any different. They're just a lot bigger, a little bit more difficult to deal with and get all chopped up, but they're just a lot bigger. Big ones grow fast and sometimes they split. Big ones you hit with a shovel, so they can be a challenge. Would you recommend doing soil samples in a smaller home garden? Um, absolutely. Uh, before soil samples, if you don't want a soil sample, you can uh, rotate crops helps a lot. So. Beans are like what we call a legume, and legumes don't need a lot of nitrogen, and they make their own nitrogen, and they actually put nitrogen in the soil. Grassy crops like corn, they need nitrogen. So if you plant beans, even green beans, on somewhere one year, then the next year you do not want to plant green beans in that same spot. You put corn there. The corn will use the nitrogen, and then any pests that came on uh, that area when they had beans, they'll be there again and mess up your beans next year earlier. So you trick the pest by putting a grass there then the next year. So that's why farmers rotate crops in the big, and that's what you should do in your garden too, except instead of doing a one year, one year rotation, or even a three crop rotation, you might have a five crop rotation in your garden. And you plant your tomatoes where the soil is acidic, and the tomatoes like that acidic soil and such. Uh, tomatoes, they, they kind of like some acidic soil, but uh, they, they also need calcium, which gives a pH uh, factor because calcium is important for the moisture uptake in a plant, and that way you're, you're, you don't get blossoming and rot. So it's a challenge because in a garden you have such a variety of crops, but you need to know where your garden's at and what does well in certain types of soil. So... Um, that's, that's what I say about that. Um, okay. I don't know how long we want this to go. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Oh, 11 minutes. So this is getting long winded already. I'll answer one last question and then we'll do a part two of our origin story and we'll get that figured out. Okay. Question and answer. <clears throat> I'll show you uh, a little bit down here. Uh, the question is, is what do the tractor numbers mean? Let's see what we have here. What do the tractor numbers mean? So I'll explain the tractor numbers just a little bit. I'll give you a general guideline. You see that one right there is a 4430. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. Let me get my finger here. Right there. 4430. Now, uh, we have a 2640. We have a, a 6430 and such. We run a lot of John Deere equipment. Uh, we run, uh, uh, we have an international 1066. So, a common method on tractors is for uh, a four-digit number. And for the first two-digit to signify um, the, the the horsepower, I guess you could say, the size. And the second two numbers will classify or give you an idea of the series or the date. So John Deere started out with like A, and Farmall did too, they started out letters. So, you know, actually I think, did John Deere start out with a, start with a D? Then go back A, B, what? Anyways, they started with letters. <laughs> then they went into um, small numbers. It wasn't long before they, let's say they came up with the 10 series. So you would have like a 2010, 3010, 4010, 5010. 2010 would be the smallest. Then 3010, 4010, that's a very common size. That was a big tractor for back then. Then 5010s. And uh, they did those for quite a bit. Not very many 5010s around. Then they went to the 20 series. So you see a lot of 
40 20s around quite a few 30 20s not very many 50 20s or 20 20s a lot of 30 30s massive amount of 40 20s um, very common tractors still sought after today good old tractors uh, but uh, not for us necessarily we don't have them um, so then they went to the 30 series then they got up and they get get big and that's that uh, that was a big tractor that 4430 I just showed you that was a big tractor um, one of the best tractors ever made uh, that's 4430 uh, that's 44 would be the size that's a pretty good size tractor 30 is a series that would be the uh, they went <coughs> excuse me 10 series 20 series 30 series along by that same time they did the international had 1066 they had their 66 series that was uh they had come up through uh the the ranks and so they were on their 66 series and then you had 10 uh 10 and they have like 14 66s and 15 66s those would be bigger tractors so after the 30 series john deere went to the 40 series so you'd go back to the um 44 they'd have a 44 40 a 44 40 is a later series than a 44 30 but a similar size we have a 26 40 so then they went to the 50 series we had for a long time a 44 50 um uh, or uh, actually uh 55 44 55 that was they went from 40 series to 50 series then they went to 55 and they did go to 60s so if i tell you that we have and we do up there we have an 8430 that's our our, our older four-wheel drive tractor that is the same era as the 4430 so we have a 4430 and an 8430 that's the big four-wheel drive tractor then they started over so they have our our two newer tractors are the 00 series 100 series we have a 9100 and we have an 8100 <clears throat> so uh then they went back up so they actually have new 8430s and old 8430s and you have to specify new or old when you're asking for parts you say i need a i need a, a lug nut for an 8430 they say new or old and we're talking 60 years of difference maybe maybe more yeah, time flies. Um, we're talking a lot. Of, we're talking decades of difference there in, in age. So we refer to our tractors, not by their series model as much. We just shorten it. So the 27 is a 2755. The 55 tells you it's a pretty, it, it's a, a medium age tractor. It's not an old one like a 30 or a 40. So the 81. 91 that's 8100 9100 we've got the 84 that's an 8430 the 26 is a 2640 the 27 is a 2755 so that's how the tractors work and we just refer to them by their first two digits and that works for us so long answer but uh maybe you learned something about how tractors work and when we're calling numbers uh how how we call them so okay uh for the last question will there be hunting videos this year um we did some trapping videos i just we're not going to do a lot of hunting this year uh denny uh, a good friend he's watching now hi denny uh shot us a deer so we do have deer meat in the fridge we kind of are flexible on hunting if there's a huge buck around we enjoy watching for him going out and sitting and just seeing him in the wild and I mean, if we get a chance to shoot them, we probably would. I, I get landowner tags, so I'm prepared. I have a landowner tag right now. But to be honest, with the crop rotation and just the way everything has lined up, there's not a lot of deer around us right now. Um, we are crop country. It's just crop, a lot of crop ground. We're not pasture ground. We're not timber ground. And the deer don't always come out here. When there's a bad storm, like when the derecho, we enjoyed hunting last year because the derecho pushed all the deer off the river bottoms and they came out here. Well, that didn't happen this year. There's just not a lot of deer around. I don't think we're going to do a lot of hunting videos. But if we do something, we'll take you along. And um, we appreciate just kind of being outdoors. But the good fall gave us a, a chance to stay in the fields and do some other miscellaneous work. So uh, we did that.
I think that probably is long enough for the first part of Q&A. I hope that answers some questions. If you have more questions, leave them below. Uh, is that about right, Abby? Yeah. Um, and I think we'll do our uh, uh, part two, at least, telling you how we got to Iowa, because I was born in North Carolina. So that makes for an interesting story, and we'll let you in on that a little bit. So Lemuel's here twirling his hat. I was going to let him sign off. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, he's still stuck on the classic like and subscribe. So um, we're glad you made it through the video. Uh, if you have any more questions, let us know. Uh, you can subscribe. Um, there's a little bell notification down below the video here that if you click on that, it, it tells you when we put out a video. You can do that on anybody's video. You might like another channel more than ours. Do it on their video. I don't care. Just uh, it tell YouTube will tell you when they put out a video. Um, giving likes are good because when you like a video, it, it uh, puts it up on YouTube's algorithm and then it, YouTube shows it to more people and then the channel has a chance to succeed more. But at this point, we do the channel because we enjoy it and we're documenting our life for, even for ourselves and gives Abby something to do because if Abby didn't have YouTube, she'd probably be out uh, selling drugs or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> we don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mama's glaring at you. No, Mama's glaring at me now. But no, it's, it's a good uh, uh, thing. Abby enjoys it. She's definitely a better editor than 98% of the people in the country right now. So, And she's only, how old are you? 13. 13. <laughs> so um, we do it because we enjoy it. We appreciate everybody watching. We try to give you something worth watching. But um, that's that. Thanks for watching.